here on and finish up, I think the last time I preached, I'm going to finish that. Black history, but I got to get to Wakanda all month. So it's going to be rough to start Sunday because I'm going to be on some other stuff. Y'all going to be ready for Sunday. And the reason that I don't do that, when I went to Haiti and understood um, the culture and the dress and what it means, it's actually offensive to them. If you're not a part of the culture, to the way I call Every color, every pattern means something. So, all right, um, so let me see. I left my. Uh, all right, Psalm 37. I left my uh, iPad for a constant errors. Um, <coughs> continuing with our album, so I'm going to give you what I left off on the sermon and just stop. Um, talk about verse 1 and 2, which talk about don't fret because of those who are evil, or uh, the envious of those who are wrong, or like the grass that is on the weather, all of this stuff. Um, so we shouldn't fret because of evil doers. Um, and it's a common thing you know, to just, 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 just reflect. And, um, it's a common thing to fret or be envious of wicked. Told you about Psalm 73. Um, the second thing from um, verse 3 and 4 uh, says, Put your delight in the Lord, or trust in the Lord, and do good. Um, so we should, we should put our trust in the light of the Lord. So um, trust in the Lord and doing good instead of worry and envy um, is, a, is sometimes a hard thing, especially when you know you're trying to do right. Um, trusting in the Lord and the one good because you see other people, um, you know, seem like they're prosperous, seem like they're doing better than you. And, uh, you know, those of us that try to do the right thing, you know, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, um, when you trust the Lord and do good, sometimes you don't always reap what you need. And so that. The trick of the enemy to get us to bag up off of our trust in the Lord and the good. So, um, but David, David counseled a man and one of God except to trust God and do good. Why? For his good. Um, and it's, it's, it, to me, it's kind of remarkable how we can get distracted from the simple work. <coughs> of trusting God and doing good. And um, because we look at, you know, seeing that their people are prospering and wicked are, are, are doing this and they're doing that one way. I mean, just, talk, just, just think about what we got going on in this country. I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, the government shut down for 31 days. The cost the United States $5 billion um, because they are going to pay uh, all of those workers back. Legislators are going to put some in place where that never happened again and the president will not have the sort of power uh, to do that. So we got a whole lot of stuff going on about trusting God and trying to do good. Even when, you know, we end up in a situation like we're in in these United States, we got, you know, this dude, he just got issues. Um, um, uh, they are. Like the uh, acting uh, Secretary of State said today that the Mueller investigation is coming to an end. Uh, but I believe in my soul that he probably uh, will be impeached. Uh, because he won't do what uh, Richard Nixon, he won't resign. So I believe he will be impeached. By the way, um, just, a, just a side note of history, they, they start the impeachment process on President Clinton. But it didn't, it didn't pass. Those of you that don't know, they actually started um, uh, 
So, so you got to trust God to do good. So, how do we worry and not envy people that seemingly are from out from outside of, from from us outside of the den? How do we not envy them and continue on the road that we are on? How do we do that? And I'm, I'm, I'm saying all this because um, we're coming up to an election and both, you know, I'm a, I'm a part of a fraternity that's still pretty good as far as part of a fraternity, fraternity and a sorority. And the climate of what America is, if we don't get a viable candidate to run against this president, he will be reelected. That's just the reality. I don't, I don't care. It's not that I'm against a, a female, but the, the, the United States at this point will not do two things. They will not elect a black, another black person. They, they still ain't like over there. And they will not let, elect a female, especially white. Not in this country that we live in. So, you know, we can say all this, we can say all that. And here's the thing that people got to understand when people run for office. Everything that you have done previously up to when you announced is going to be scrutinized. And I get an email, uh, and you can sign up for the email. I know how the senators from Alabama vote on everything. Yes. I would, I would yeah, I mean, you, you, what, what's happened to us, America is we got things, we don't, we just listen to CNN and MSNBC. You don't realize that there's a certain narrative that they want us to believe. Yes. But at the end of the day, it was Senator, the junior senator from Alabama that introduced legislation that said, okay, since the government is shut down, I, I propose that we're going to take no pain. They cut up. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about they cut up. I mean, and that's the stuff that they ain't going to talk about. Have you heard them? I'm talking about that. He said, okay, well, since they're not getting paid, then we need to suspend our pay until we open up the government. Well, they had got word a couple of days before that TSA had got together and like, look, the only way this is going to end, we just ain't going to have to go. We ain't going to work. So that's why that meeting happened late at night at the White House. Because when you, we, I mean, it's evil all around us. And, and, and I mean, it's just like, what, I mean, it's just like what we got going on. It's hard sometimes to not have pain in your heart for this man. It's just hard. Because now, the prejudice, the, the you know, the, the downright, you know, evil, it's just, I mean, if you if you got your head in the sand and you don't see what's going on, then you just don't want to see what's going on. All right? And then, now, those of us that are part of the Democratic Party, I know, at this, we don't get no fair money, but I can say what I want to say. Oh, um, oh. Um, uh, those who are going to part of the Democratic Party, it makes no sense for 50,000 folks to run that don't have a chance. <laughs> that don't have a chance in the world. It's almost like my name, like I announced, I'm, I'm running. So uh, we have to really look at that. So when we talk about that, uh, back to my written question, I'll just. <coughs> so how do we not worry and be envious when we're trying to trust God and we're trying to do right and when we see? We got all this evil going on around us. I put up a video the other night, the reason that I said that, I'm, that, that this is Black History Month, and I'm, the reason I want to go and get this little other part of the service out way, you know, some Wakanda stuff, is because we got to quit when, when information is out there. Do you realize that every school in the state of Alabama that is on the family list is black? Every school that's on the Alabama family list is black. And only 350 white children go to the school. Combined. Combined in the whole state. Do you realize that they just turned four public schools to charter schools yeah. in Montgomery? So stuff is going on. I mean, they 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 changed. They reversed it, and we got we got to be we got to be conscious of them to know and to see what's going on. The education system, as we have known it, is about to be totally different. Because I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. 
They got them in charter schools, and it's a pilot they're not learning. If they do well, watch every mainstream white church gonna have a gonna have a charter school. You know why? Because they got the facilities to do it. You know why? Because they got the teachers, they got the tied principals, and all of they got the folk. And then when you go to charter school, what folk don't understand is they are not legislated by the state board. You have your own board. You do what you want to do. If you want to do corporate punishment, you can do corporate punishment, but you're only doing it with federal dollars. And so people are not understanding what's going on. And here's the thing. <laughs> Me and what I'm talking about this all the time, we talk about education, it's happening. So the question tonight is, well, do we, people like us, that look like us, how are we going to grasp what's going on? Because if we don't, we're going to look up and they're going to have white public charter school okay. all around us. And our children are gonna be, it's gonna be, the public school system is gonna be terrible because they're gonna take all the best teachers. And the flip side, you know, to add to that too, I think we, <coughs> see room, but we were talking about, like, you know, I always had a conversation yeah. with us about the fact that they're gonna scream who they want. Yeah. And we have some brilliant young black kids. We do brilliant. And I see it every day. But what happened is, there's one child, and I don't know the system that was near us, that was out of the workshop. The lady had no idea who I was. And I'm sitting at the table, and I, out of 66 people in that workshop, uh, she didn't know. I, I'm sitting at the table, and she and a couple of her friends bragging about the children that come from our system. And she bragging about how smart these children. She was like, well, here's it. We, Green County, we get a lot of Green County kids because the system is not that good. They don't have, and she's sitting at the table. She, she, they don't have the best teachers. Like, we listen to what she's saying. Exactly. So I sat there and, and, and closed my mouth and waited until she finished. Well, she didn't realize that the pilot program at the, at the, the workshop that we were at, the actual facilitator was, was our mentor. Mm -hmm. who had been in our school right. for a whole nine weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, before it got over with, they introduced everybody, and it was like, I said, no, they church. <laughs> I did that on purpose, yeah. And they were bragging about their schools and how bad our schools were. Yeah. But the lady, when we got down to our table, which was the last day, yeah. she said, before she could get to it, she said, this table. And then she said, wait, hold up. She said, I'll wait and let you introduce yourself. And so she stood up and she told me, you know, which, what we had been doing in our school, they told every other school that you don't need to go to Utah County. Well, at that point, she said, I introduced myself as a secondary teacher at Green County. Mm -hmm. The system they just got done bashing. Right. Well, everybody said trying to be red, and everybody tried to be my friend. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody was talking about, oh, you know such and such. And I said, yeah, I'll talk to him. Yeah. When he was in second grade. So right. when they move out of fourth grade, when they leave our school, we go third. People don't want the church. I'm just being like, hey, this is because there's so much stuff going on. We've got to have All right. But there's so much stuff going on. They said, I don't want them in the system. Yeah. But they can't be able to move like that. So right. they move. Right. So anyway, they're talking about bridge for these children work. I said, they were bridge back to the next one. This is what we had done some stuff that this lady was trying to get, teach us to do. And that was the whole thing. It's like, they're bragging. And it's a constant, I'm going to pull the wool from my I'm going to pull the rug from my we don't wake up. And that's what they're gonna do. What they say, oh, the other side of it is when they get our kids there, that forty thousand dollars per student that leave their school system, yeah. guess what happened? They get their child there, that, that child stays there for two weeks. That child cuts up one time. It's got the money that go, because the child is not in that we at that in that system. And that's what it's about, like you said, they don't have to cater to nobody. Um, Oh, they just have to do whatever they want. They want to money. So yeah, everything else is going to be there. Yeah, and so that's why I want to talk about it. Like, like, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, trust them going to do good. But I mean, all this stuff going on. How you, how you continue to do good when all this, all this real is going on? When you know that you send your children to a system that basically that disenfranchising them, that they are actually telling teachers that you gotta fail so many students. Mm. This is actually happening. That they are telling teachers 
that there are a certain number of children that you have to fail. This, this is happening. I ain't, talking about, I ain't talking about it happening in Green County. I ain't talking about it happening down in Panola or what it is. What is this? There's something to count. I'm talking about right here in Tuscaloosa. That percentage of children, you know. Exactly. And see, this is where the other part of the great contention is this, this failing, this so called failing system that they have set up. Yeah. What they're doing is they're breaking down what they call subgroups. Yeah. To say if, if I'm from, if I'm there, if we have some of it, a certain amount of those students would have to pay. Yeah. But they want that, that certain amount to fail because yeah. if one child in there fails yeah. and you only have uh, 10, 10 students, that means 10% of that population. Has fallen, has failed. Well, they said that that sort of movement, that school has failed. That goes with the whole picture. And they also said, okay, well, 10% of this particular population is failing. 20% of the other may be failing. They add that up. 10% may be uh, disabled. <coughs> 30% of them may be failing. So now you got 50% failure, which is that you can get good help for. <laughs> and it's not even a reflection of a whole school. Like, like I said, those groups, they do it to bring it down. Predominantly, why school, when they fail, yeah. they get swept under the rug in the test kitchen. Five years ago, when, <laughs> when, 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 when Hoover and Spain Park could not, could not pass the ACT fine, yeah. it got reported at one, I, 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 I was in the point, it got reported on the news at 128, 129. 128, I was looking at the clock. Yeah. I was looking at the you know, report card coming out. At 128, it got reported. You heard nothing about it, it wasn't in the news the next day. Two days later, the legislation came out in the journal that says ACT is fired about to be this bad. Yeah. Because none of those central passes were an A. Yeah. Uh, all the line passes were a B. They were also one school yeah. passed it with A or B. Spain Park, all the rest of the schools did the fail. Spain Park got to say those are hot. Who got down? Um, Mountain Brook got a got, 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 got B on. But not, you heard nothing else about it and change the, the uh, assessment for the next year. But yeah, it's going to happen right now. Same thing happened when, when we were in school, we had to take graduation exams. Yeah. Right? They cut the graduation exam out yeah. because they weren't passing the class. They weren't passing the period. So they were like, oh, we got to find a way. But anyway, so back to my question that y'all don't want to answer. Y'all like, let me and want to keep on talking about all this stuff. <laughs> But we're talking about all this evil that is going that, that is around us and the Bible telling us to trust in the Lord and do good. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna ask that question. How can we how can we roll with it? And then people say, well, you know, parents ought to come to parents ought to come to PTA me. Well, I, some the teachers I had at Steel for Height, they knew my mom was working 16 hours just that part on and all that kind of stuff. But what they would do, because they went to church with them, they would pull mama to the side and give her information to say, like, you need to go to the school. What are the type of teachers that you want? <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, back there, back there. Yeah, yeah my part, I've had to fail in school. Yeah. In the whole, um, in the whole district. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So West Brown Middle School. Yeah. Because I'm equipped with that. Don't quit. <laughs> don't quit children. So, I mean, we got a very real situation that's going on. Like, how do you trust God in that situation? <laughs> I mean, this this real. I mean, I want to I want to And y'all got to be, you got to be very honest with yourself. Yo, we know the Bible says we just read it. Say, trust the Lord and do good. But not. Are we dealing with the practice? Like in, in the moment, it's, it's, it's okay, party. I, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. But let's take over. Sometimes I just want to knock you out. Like, mm -hmm. Just real. Mm -hmm. And we got to be honest. You know, like, we got to be honest with ourselves. That's important. Yeah. The other side, when you look at it, it was so amazing. I was sharing with one of my coworkers. You know, that, that's something I think I shared with you when you walked out the door. <laughs> Right after you got done preaching and said, you can't go yet. I, I haven't said anything to you yep. or anybody. Yep. And, and it got confirmed by Monday when I got to school. Yep. But it was just, I was sharing with her what you had done 
you know, I had to contemplate it the whole time. Yeah. And when when yet the, uh, the Black Friday, she was talking to me, and I was like, she was like, well, we got to go. She said, at that time, she I said, but it ain't that. I said, right now, she's not. So as soon as she said that, the child had walked up. Just got walked up, that's true, and you just wanted to play the conversation. And just to say, you made you, you, tip, you correct that child the right way. And she just looked at me, and she nearly teared up, and she said, I see why. She said, I see why. She said, because they, we, they frustrate us so bad because we care about them. Right? But when we get to the point where we, when we, where we don't care about one of the records anymore, it's time for us to go. We don't want to meet right here. Right. But when you have a point where you see a child, you know, and I think last year I had a bus driver that was due to the skid pull at the bus driver that was due to the like 430 kids. And I'm the one that they see every morning. I do the buses every morning. But anyway, this bus driver pulled up and I thought something was wrong. He just jumped off the bus. He had like three buses behind him, ready on the road. He was like, I said, he said, you listen to I said, yes, sir. He said, so you wanted all the kids they're talking about? I said, kids. So at that point, he proceeded to tell me. He said, look, he said, I see kids want you in the morning. He said, every child in the school will love you. He said, but the other part of it, I see you love every child. And he said, this ain't no fake love. He said, because every child, if they can't love you, they just want to touch your own. And he said, I watch them every morning and every evening. And that's the type of stuff that we ask for us, but, you know. <laughs> We have to do one day of basic because that's the only love that some children are going to get. That's the only appreciation some children are going to get. That's the only <coughs> time a child like I love you. And that changes the mindset of a lot of children, which changes the, the, the achievement status of a lot of children. But that part is the loving side, but it's the frustrating side. And we see all the other stuff and how the other mistreat them. You just want to go knock somebody out. I mean, and that's bad news, legislators, and everything. I don't know what it was. It hit when I shared that Daryl Abbey came into the school. Yeah. Uh, wanted to sell his policies. But he used to, he used to the very same one that voted to take $300 million out of public education to give a point. He was the very same one that voted to say that he didn't need a raise. Right. That $300 million, that, that's why I got all, all this in of how they voted. They were bringing a bunch more. Yeah. And, um, that was about 300 million, not 350 million, that was taken from the public education budget. And he was one of the main ones that wrote it on the way. At the same time, he didn't vote to help. He didn't have the conscience to come into the school system and say, here, do this. Here's my front range stuff. He's going to make a couple hundred thousand dollars for all these little kids that don't think that we don't need, they don't need 350 million dollars. I mean, you know, dollar representation, right? But he had the dog to come up in the school to sell his stuff. All these same little kids, they want to take money from them. You know, I just had to look at them in a kind of way and say, hey, no, no, sir. I told the principal, don't throw that mess in the trash, because that's what he did. She had no clue. But that's what they do to our kids. So, we'll talk about trust and God, we'll talk about doing Jesus. Let's look at verse 5 and 6, Psalm 37. <laughs> um, he says, Commit your way to the Lord, <laughs> trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon. And so we gotta eat, we gotta trust God to protect and not only protect us, but to also promote us. You gotta trust God to protect you and to promote you. Now, I mean, what we got going on? Um, you know, I think I heard on the news today or I saw an article today I was reading. Well, whatever company that Trump said was gonna come, they ain't coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all these jobs that he promised, that he ran them. The, co the company said, oh, he gonna say he said, he, he, he gonna say he's just being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Same word, they can play the clip. Right? Right. Say, yeah. um, so we gotta trust God to protect us. And promote us. But how many feel like I feel sometimes God can take too long? I'm just gonna tell you. I'm just gonna tell you. The stuff that we deal with on our job, and you 
training folk that going to be your, they're gonna be your boss. They got less experience, less education. And you be like, wait a minute now, God, I'm in. I'm in. That's wrong. When you do get the promotion, they don't respect you because you don't look like them. And they want to go all the way around you and not respect you in your promotion. Yeah, but most of the disrespect that I can see is not from white folk. It's from folk that look like them. I'm not gonna take it. I ain't never had no problem with, with white people. I mean, with one of my chaplains, and I say, dude, it, it was the Negro. And I don't understand that. I don't know why we don't promote, I mean, or we don't support our people when they're in leadership. I don't know, like, we feel, it's, it's almost like when people get promoted on our job, that we feel like now they above us. These are the same folks that were just in the break room with you, their position right. change. Right. But I mean, you ought to use that to your advantage. Right. But people don't do that. Just like, I, listen, I'm sorry, but I brag about my doctor being black. I mean, I mean, it's black doctors are far better in between. Good ones. All right, so I read. So when I get my prescription, and I see Bernie Scott see on listen, that make I have a sense of pride. First of all, that he looked like me, and number two, he from the rural just like me. Y'all do know Dr. Scott from New. Yeah, any good thing. He went to Sunshine High School, and if you trace Sunshine High School, Sunshine High School probably put out the most black. Doctors and lawyers and judges in this entire state. All of them in the sunshine, which they have now closed. They have closed sunshine. Yeah, all right. So um, um, I said I'm gonna say this. So like, it's very real. Like you're trying to, you're trying to do good, you're trying to do right, you're trying to let God promote you, but then somebody always gonna try to take your case. <laughs> They always gonna try to test you now. And so you gotta you gotta be in a position and you gotta say, okay, God. Sometimes you just gotta walk away, go to the break room, go outside, go to your car, and just be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> but we still gotta trust God. We gotta feel God that He's gonna protect whatever we're going through and then promote it. Because I mean, I mean Sometimes I just think God has a great sense of humor. Yes. Um, because I mean, I mean, it's no good time. I mean, it's no good time. All the time, talk to him. I'm tired. Yeah, I mean, you get tired of that. And then, when we do get to the finish line, they move it. Yeah. Or they up the front. I mean, it's like, what, I mean, what are we doing? I mean, I'm going through something now. I'm trying to get to the finish line. And that time I think I'm through that, like, but we need listen. What else y'all need? But anyway, but we got to trust God to protect us yeah. and promote us. And that's a hard thing to do. But 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 he said Psalm 31, we got to commit our way to the Lord and we got to trust him and he shall break the path. We got to take him as his word. But when we going through those situations, it's hard to do that. And so the question is. And what I've been saying to people of influence, those that are that are that are supposedly elected officials that are afraid to speak out, is now, now that some schools are on the table and, and this is happening, what are you gonna do to get our peace? Because if you ain't willing to, if you ain't willing to do nothing to get our peace, then we don't need you on the board. We don't need you to get the check. Showing up at Ribbon Cut, hell, I can do that. <laughs> we need you to be in the red hell and saying, this is what I need for my club. You ain't got to do it, you got to know how to do it in the back room. One thing I say about Ernestine Tucker when she was on the school board, she kept a lot of stuff, she, she got a lot of stuff for us. The summer program, all that stuff that, that happened on the west side, west side action camp, all that stuff, that was because Ms. Tucker fought for us. The whole, the, the whole thing is, we got to <laughs> We got to stop expecting folk to do stuff that may not be qualified where they are. 
That's all I'm saying. Because I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna tell you how petty white people petty is on a different level. Alright? This white people, white people petty is like this. They'll come to Sunil. Sunil work again. Alright? White people gonna fight you in your face and do it with a smile. <laughs> They'll say, to me, you know, to appreciate what, 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 what's been, what you've been doing. But the way that we're going, uh, we're going in a different direction. We wish you the best of luck. <laughs> That's what they do. They cut you, <coughs> and they do it with a smile. And we go to jobs all over this state every day and think they are free. But what I am saying is, have some common sense. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That you go to your job. Y'all hear me say this all the time. Some of y'all still ain't got this. You go to your job to make money, not make friends. That's right. That's right. I, I'm, I'm here to get a check. That's all. I don't, don't want to go to lunch with you. We don't have to have no birthday club. <laughs> I got church members and all that. I'm in ministry in my church. Nah, I ain't got to do that with you now. So, 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 when you commit your way to the Lord, trust Him. The Bible says He shall break the past. The hard thing is, what Stephanie just said, it's hard to trust Him that He's going to break the past. Because it seems like you going over the same thing over and over and over and over again. Everything in you.
creep into your home life. That you got to know how when you leave your job to leave it on the field. That the people that stay with you are not your enemies. They are not that back by health at work. <laughs> I mean, they just not. And, and sometimes you, you gotta you gotta have a pep talk with yourself on the way home when you dealt with all this hell. That's right. What you say? Like, I mean, you really gotta say, okay, I, my spouse and my children, okay, I'm gonna go ahead, even though I didn't have a nation's day, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put a smile on my face because they are not the enemy, they are on my team. But sometimes when that opposition is going on on your job, it has a way of spilling over to your, to, to, especially to your children. And you know, especially to those that we, that, that we love. So we got to be very conscious of when, you know, when we're doing it and you know when you have, sometimes when you get off work, I do, I do it. I don't go straight home all the time I get off work. Sometimes I need to ride around and, 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 and yeah. Decompress. There are some things that I tell my wife that happen, but there's a lot of things that I don't tell her. Because if I did tell her, she'll probably want to go to blow the place up. But a lot of stuff I just, you know, I might ride around, go see the route home, you know, think about it, and then do it all over again the next day. And uh, and I know I know how it is. It's all about, you know, sometimes, let's just say this, we just got to be real honest. Sometimes we own these jobs and we don't really like what's going on, but we, we got to pay people. And welfare ain't enough. And unemployment ain't either. It would be good if, if unemployment went by yourself. But, but everybody getting them same, you know, so them, them same the corn. And the old folks say, my grandma used to say outside, I'm going to get my pen. I'm like, yeah, they really are pen. That's why they call them pen. Oh, I'm going to drop my pen. They, 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 they said that. And when I, when I got grown and found out, I was like, oh, yeah, them, but they are some pen. <laughs> so we got to um, we gotta, we, we gotta know that he shall break the path. We just got to know that. All right? If you look at verse 7 and 8, um, he said, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Don't fret at all the cause of harm. So we got to rest in the Lord and we got to wait for him because God has promised to faithfully take care of those who put their trust in him. So that's another reason why we, we can trust in God. Then he says we can rest in the Lord. We can wait patiently for him instead of fretting and fearing that God has forgotten us or intends evil for us. You know, there are some people that still mad with God. I mean, it's just, all it is, they think, they, they think God has allowed this to happen to him for a specific reason. They don't understand that that took everything that is a season. And so, resting in the Lord speaks of a, of a particular kind of rest, the rest of silence. We talk too much. And we never said it. Never mm -hmm. when you rest in the Lord, you got to turn stuff off. Phones, iPads, Androids, Apples, whatever you got, whatever my TVs, to hear God clearly and to rest in Him speaks of a particular kind of rest, the rest of silence, ceasing from words of self-defense. Sometimes we just got, don't say that. Act like you didn't hear. It's hard, man. It's hard. Somebody say real. Sometimes you got to act like you don't hear what you, what you heard. Let's, 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 let's pop off for a moment. Now think about that. Rest in silence. When was the last time you rested in silence? Some of y'all got to have a radio on in your car. Why? You on the phone. <laughs> you ain't listening to it. When was the last time that you got in your car and you didn't turn on anything, you didn't pick up any phone 
and you concentrated on your driving and you, your thought process. When was the last time you did that? <laughs> you do it every day. <laughs> you got to write. You got to write. Man, we, we, we do that quite often. <laughs> We do that quite often. <laughs> but but be honest, what was the last time that you just that you did it? Some people don't ever talk about it. What? I did this morning. What about the rest of the 95% of y'all? <laughs> do you understand? I mean, do you understand that sometimes it depends on the day. I mean, I'm like that. Like sometimes, like I'm having a day that I want to listen to some music, I might listen to some trap music. That's just, that, that just how I get up in I'm going to listen to the track. I mean, it just all depends. Then someday, I'm on my giant table. I'm on my bottom blue one. It just depends. All day. I mean, all day. I mean, it just depends. So, the whole thing is, and, and here's the thing. That my, my 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 family don't understand about me. Everything about me, even my own sister and brother, everything about me, I don't disclose. Just because you don't hear me reference trap music, don't mean I don't listen to it. Oh, I listen to it because I'm in the world. I'm a preacher, and I'm trying to be relevant. And I got children that I need to reach. That's right. So I need to listen to what they listen. That don't mean I love it. I, love it. I absolutely despise it. No, because all that cussing and bees and natures, I, I mean, all that, I can't, I can't get it. But, but I do listen sometimes. Because some, some, sometimes I'm in a mood that I want to go to work and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I can't call them, that's why I listen to them. Bees <laughs> 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 in the trunk. <laughs> I mean, I'll do that. That's what happens. I mean, I'm not just being honest. I'm just being honest. But back to the 95% of y'all that didn't say that. So if you have not rested in silence, then what you waiting on? Why you resting in silence? 
Because everything around us is so noisy. Everything is moving. Everything, everything is going. Nothing is still. That's why God can speak to you when you go to pee at 3 o'clock. Because ain't nobody up but you and him. That's why you can hear God. You be sitting, you think in 30 minutes I'm told you to be on that three hour. Just saying. Just being ready. All right? All right. All right. So we got to rest in the Lord. Um, we shouldn't burn at God's dealings and how he deals with us or even how he deals with people that have wronged us. Like we shouldn't murmur about that because if we trust God that he's going to promote us and protect us then why you complain about a situation that you can't control? You hear me say all the time that we cannot change people. So why you, I mean you focus on your job like on my job that, that, that's in everything that don't, it, it don't even concern them. Well, let me tell you what happened. You know, so and so, she, the secretary, she came to work, and then so and so said something to her, and then she, she, she don't never speak. What is your job description? Your job description is to answer the phone. <laughs> Why you worry about all these other phones? That can mean, ma'am, answer the phone, get a message. That's, that's all you need to do. Some, some of our murmuring, is brought up on ourselves because we uh we 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 put ourselves in some situation that we should be in. That's just that's just the reality of the Anybody want to come in on that? What y'all doing right now? I got a couple of on the sky and she kept a notebook. She used to sit in the room and watch right now. People with the lunch and when they came back. And I'm talking about like for like she was the boss. Yeah. She went along. I know. <laughs>
says for a little while, while the wicked shall be no more. The evildoers have their day of prosperity. Understand that. They got their day. Give them credit. They're doing it. But it's short lived. Trump, he got his day. It's coming. <laughs> it's been a long two years. It's been a long two years. Huh? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Alright, that's it. I'm, I'm done. Baby. God bless y'all. Um, I don't think they're going to happen. I'm off.